Hi, Maria here. I have Val back. Hello. It's good to be back as always. So today we want to talk about uh, Val's uh, bought some new fragrances. And so we are going to talk about them. It's a real mixture. Um, I don't think there's any Middle Eastern ones in there's here. There's one. It, okay. There's so one. one Middle Eastern. <laughs> it's a mixture of Middle Eastern designer and niche. And so I'm so excited to share that with you. Before we get started, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the weird, wonderful family. It would be amazing to have you part of the community. And... Let's get into this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I ha I I we started like she was handing them and I started sniffing and then I thought, no, let's wait. So I don't know. It, I've smelt a few of them, but not everything. So okay. So we're gonna start with a very exciting one. We're not gonna wait at all. Okay. I am so excited about this. The this is the cotton candy by Theodorus Calatinas. I had to track this down on Facebook. Like it was really hard to find. It's not easy to get in Canada. I'm so glad I did. I'm, I'm in love with it. I'm spraying this right on. Oh, I sprayed it on my knuckles. <laughs> oh, well, that's good enough. Oh, oh, that's amazing. That's totally cotton candy. Yeah, this one I hadn't smelt yet, but I was really excited about. I'm glad you found it. I've been really obsessed with cotton candy and finding the perfect cotton candy fragrance. I don't know that this is 100% perfect as far as cotton candy goes. And the reason being is that this one is very caramel heavy. Okay. So you do get cotton yeah. candy, but how I would describe this is as if you've made your own um, caramel sauce at home with lots of butter, lots of brown sugar, lots of heavy cream very realistic. I don't feel this is synthetic in the slightest. Yeah. And I don't know how Theodorus Calatinus does that. You know, just this incredible, almost always they're not synthetic. You're getting a real, especially with the gourmand blends, such real notes. It's yeah. just beautiful. But it's as if you took that caramel sauce and drizzled it on a fresh cotton candy. I agree. Like when I first smelt it, it like out of the gate, it smells like cotton candy. And then very quickly, like within the time that I've sprayed it, it now smells like to me, almost like brown sugar that's been caramelized. Um, like, yeah, caramelized or crystallized. And I get that more than the cotton candy. Even bordering on a bit of burnt sugar. Yeah, I agree. Just bordering, not, not fully burnt. Like it's a very smooth beautiful note but yeah you get sugar yeah absolutely yeah like if you are, are a pink sugar fan something of that nature where it's that sweet this will be right up your alley I don't like pink sugar and I like this but for me mm -hmm. I think that this would be one that I would want to pair with something else like use it yeah. almost as a layering fragrance to add some sweet that was what I was after when I got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because this one, I I need you to smell Zucchero Filato. Oh yes, you do. Do you want to need to? Smell why don't it? we do that right now? Let's so that, do it. Because that's a lot different. So uh, just talking about the the cotton candy from Theodorus Cal Calatinus. As I talk with my hand in my face, okay, <laughs> it's, it's so. irresistible. You can't <laughs> yeah. stop. So it to me it mm. smells almost like a Werther's candy. Yes. Yes. It's that buttery caramel. It's so rich. It's very rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is great for uh, fall to add some delicious, like if you had an apple fragrance and you want to make it into an apple pie, you could use that because it smells like there's a little bit of spice in it. Okay. Try this one. Ooh. I've got, I've got little, uh, uh, back to you. little things if you want to. Now, Zucchero Filato, it's uh, pink berries. Oh my cotton God. candy. To me, this is straight up cotton candy and it stays cotton candy. Is this available? Like where I, uh, I need this. <laughs> I'm like tongue tied. Okay, so I checked on the Kaisers website and they are oh. starting production again in September. Okay. I think you can get it on Lucky Scent. That's what I was gonna ask because I'm, I'm just so impatient. Yeah, I don't isn't it wait. amazing? That's incredible. I need to know what this is like on my skin because yeah, I get the berry. Yeah. Yeah. And, wow. and this lasts forever. I imagine this one lasts forever too. This, Ooh. this, uh, this is as good to me as coffee addict. It's in that same oh, yes. sort of, it, and same sort of sweetness. 
So yeah. if you like a coffee addict, let's say you liked you you like the coffee addict, but you don't want the coffee aspect. You just want the sweet. This is the same amount of sweetness. Well you know what I mean? Well said. Yeah. Because it's got that really rich, irresistible caramel that's really deep that you get with coffee addict. What? I'm falling in love with you. I just. <laughs> She starts talking and I just love her. Oh, now I just screwed it. God. Anyway, I love you. Okay. Oh, Maria, me too. <laughs> so fun talking about photographs. It's so nice. Oh. Okay, what are you having? <laughs> just love. But okay, yes, so yes, back to the Theodora's Calatinas and the beauty of the caramel that he adds. I'm thinking of three fragrances or two to add to this one, like exactly what you were saying. The coffee addict is just as rich with the caramel, mm -hmm. but you may not necessarily always want to fill the room with coffee the yes. way that fragrance does, right? Yep. And then of course caramel oud has mm -hmm. the same delectable caramel, would you say? I would say very close. Um, I personally like caramel oud better because I like the oud and there's a little bit of a boozy feel. Yeah. But this to me would be in the same sort of family as something like a can a vanilla candy rock sugar by Kay yes. Alley. Yeah. So, but but this is sweeter than that. Uh, but I just see this as being an amazing layering fragrance and I am assuming that that lasts forever. It lasts a long time. It yeah. layers beautifully and I actually did layer it with Kaali, the apple fragrance, the Eden Juicy Oh apple, yeah. And I couldn't even stop smelling We're... myself. It was, I didn't go out in public that day because I went, <laughs> it was so incredible. It's, it's a gorgeous and this would be good with, uh, I think, uh, Latafa, uh, Badiel, Oud, Sublime. Yes. Yeah. Because that's similar. Definitely, oh, definitely. Oh, that's one I want. Yeah. Snip it one more time. Oh, I've got it on my fingers. Oh, okay, good. On your knuckles. <laughs> yeah. um, I feel that so often cotton candy fragrances can be a little synthetic or a little airy. This one is deep and rich. Yeah. So it was a really pleasant surprise. I didn't expect it to smell like almost like you're walking into a candy shop while they're making the candy. Mm -hmm. So you're getting, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. You're getting the fudge, you're getting the caramel, you're getting the candy apple without the apple, but that kind of confectionery mm -hmm. feel. High, high marks. I absolutely love this one. So it takes a little tracking down, especially if you're in Canada, but yeah. you know, just do a search. You'll find it. It's incredible. And if we can find a link somehow. Yeah. Let's do it. Everything will be linked down below as, as usual. All right. So let's just stay strong with the intense, beautiful gourmands. I was able to get a really great deal on Amore Cafe by Mansara. I've been wanting this since the first whispers about it. I think you smelled this, but smell it again. I, I did smell it, but I can't remember. You even gave me a sample. What I do oh. love about this one is it's like we were saying about the Theodorus Calatinus. You've got to be in the mood for coffee. And I thought this might be like really coffee because it's Mori Cafe. There is a note of coffee, but it's a supporting role. Mm -hmm. I don't find it's front and center with this one. And I'm actually very pleased about that because I was looking for something again sweet for layering right i get so much brown sugar in this that's yeah. what i mainly get yeah it's I probably agree. the most successful brown sugar fragrance i've ever had um in just that realistic note what do you get i don't get any cream feel like any milky feel yeah I don't but it either. reminds me of if you had an americano or a coffee and you put caramel syrup into it mm -hmm. um you'd get that sweet caramel black Black coffee. I can see that. Yeah, very um, syrupy. But the coffee is uh, fairly weak. So I'm not, mm -hmm. it's not coffee prominent. The coffee is present, but I agree, like a brown mm -hmm. sugar kind of caramel type vibe yeah. going on. I think that this is very warm and would be beautiful in the fall and the winter. Very, yeah. The, I, I'm assuming the longevity is insane. The longevity is excellent. It's good. Six to eight hours, you're going to be getting little loss of it at the later part of that for sure. Um, and definitely for the fall, I do find this a little too sweet because it's like for the summer months, for the hot yeah. weather. Just because it is like pure syrup almost like it's there's not much else going on it's yeah. a very very sweet and I agree with you no lactonic no rounded creamy notes yeah. 
we just got like a pure thin syrup that's very high sugar yeah with the nuances of the brown sugar and a little bit of coffee yeah i agree and i agree it, to me it mm. smells thin it mm -hmm. smells thin and it smells linear but it smells good mm -hmm. absolutely and quite yeah. sexy like i find it kind of totally, sexy. totally totally i don't think there's any musk in this i don't think there's anything that makes it kind of like leaning feminine this is just a pure pure gourmand i agree so anybody can wear it and it's a staple in your collection for layering so yeah really recommend this one and have you layered it with anything ah that's a good question i've just honestly just been in i might have layered it with some of my gourmand duas to just add an right. extra oomph of sweetness okay, yeah but i haven't really been committed to layering that much with it yet right i just got so seduced by the theodorus calatinus cotton well candy. i can't stop <laughs> sniffing my fingers it's so good you guys like, yeah it's, it's, it's really so good. good yeah so when i was in my search for the ideal cotton candy and i'm still in that search but i'm about 75 percent down the road thanks to theodorus i did pick up this one this is a classic fragrance you'll hear people talking about a lot and it's just vanille eau de toilette by Outremer or otrime paris i'm not do you know how to say that uh let me see it i know, i have no idea i'd say Outremer. yeah that sounds about right um i like it I'm not blown away. And I, I think there's two camps with this fragrance and I really think it just has to do with your nose. You know, some people, it's kind of like that cilantro thing. Some people yeah. really get with it and some people just completely miss the boat. It's not that impressive. It's very affordable. It is a good vanilla. Apparently the wearer goes nose blind pretty quickly. And I have noticed that and other people will say, it smells like a bakery around there. Oh, okay. You know? Mm, it's it's a nice vanilla, but it's it isn't long lasting. That that is what I remember about it. Like yeah. as far as vanillas go, you can get more long lasting uh vanillas that are maybe a little bit more money, but will outperform this. The notes are just like vanilla cotton candy. Like oh, very, I see. very okay. simple. Yeah. I don't get a huge dose of cotton candy from this and I do get some synthetic notes. I still like it enough. I mean, first of all, the presentation is really cool. It's got sort of an old school, um, like art deco feel, which I love. Yeah. I like seeing this on my dresser with my fragrances and it is an adequate vanilla. Like I, I'd like to give it higher marks than that, but that's just the honest truth. Yeah. I might wear this around the house or blend this, use it as a layering fragrance. I don't think I'd buy it again. Yeah. I am curious to see how this macerates, if it changes over time, but I wanted to bring it along just because I wanted to give an honest review because I know when you're searching for the perfect cotton candy or vanilla, this is a stop a lot of us make. Yeah. So if you're considering this one, that's my honest review. And you know, so you don't look like you're clamoring to get yourself a bottle either necessarily. No, I've got enough vanillas that scratch that itch, yeah. you know, where it's a pretty linear milk toast vanilla. You know, yes, and and those yeah. are are nice, but I don't need. Uh, I certainly don't need any more. I've got enough of those. Honestly, this reminds me of a vanilla that's got some spice, some brown sugar from mm -hmm. Theodorus Calatinus. To me, that would be like more the vanilla that I'm into as opposed to just a straight up vanilla. Absolutely, yeah. yeah you you need a little something extra, and I think too, just in terms of longevity, you want yeah. either you know little bit of patchouli, a little bit of lemon, just something that's going to give it a, like a je ne sais quoi, but it's also going to actually lengthen the length yeah. of the fragrance, which is frustrating to me because I'm getting pretty bored of lemon vanillas, to be quite <laughs> honest. Like Never. I, just, <laughs> I love them. I know most people love them and I can obviously like layer up fragrances like that. Yeah. I mean, they're stunning. I just wish there was a way. And I think, again, I'm sorry, guys, I'm just back to this again. There really isn't anything but pure gourmand, delicious cotton candy caramel in this. And it lasts. Yeah. High, high marks. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Oh. So staying in the same vein, we got some sweeties. So I'm really late to the party on this. This is actually, so this is one of two Middle Eastern fragrances in this haul. This one is actually, I picked this one up because of your high marks for the Baroque Satin Oud. Yeah, which I love. So I figured this is probably, they're gonna do a great job. This is the Baccarat Rouge 540 DNA. And I just, it's beautiful. It really yeah. is a beautiful suite. It's the X straight version. Okay, that I, I agree. Like mm -hmm. it's got that woodiness. 
Mm -hmm. um, some of you guys have commented um, smelling it off the cap. I smell fragrances all the time. I do agree that you should spray it. If we sprayed all these fragrances, first of all, my family would hate me. They already can't stand the amount I've sprayed. But um, also it just, it gets overwhelming in here. We wouldn't be able to smell anything. So I'll spray ones that I'm not familiar with, but if I know the scent profile, I can oftentimes tell mm -hmm. um, on, the, on the cap. So I don't recommend that if you're gonna purchase a fragrance. I always think that you need to at least spray it on a card. Uh, if you're buying, you should spray it on your skin. Mm -hmm. But for the purpose of videos, I can get a good enough reference from the cap a lot of times so that we can save our nose. Yeah. So I, I just thought I'd put that out there. So this one, I agree, as soon as I smelt it, I thought it smells a little bit more like the x -Straight. So for me, yes. what I prefer the x over the original and the reason why is I like that little bit of extra woodiness in it. Yeah. So this one is really good. Like I don't need any more Baccarat dupes, mm -hmm. but if you are looking for a dupe, this one is good. And the price on this one is insane. Yeah, I think I got it for $25 on Perfume Online in Canada. So this is my second Baccarat Rouge dupe. The other one I had, and I really didn't like, but I've started to warm up to quite a bit, is the Orientica Red Cage. Oh, oh, you're liking it now. Okay. I actually really like it a lot. And I think for me, I did go a bit nose blind on and off. It, it, so right. That was just annoying to me. Of course, I could always tell what people were after and liking about it, but I felt like it's it's too subtle for me. It's not quite sweet enough for me. I got that kind of dentist's office feeling. I just was like, this is too much work. I'm just not right. into it. For me, I loved, say, Ariana Grande Cloud. Oh, I okay. really do like, I just want it a little bit sweeter, right? right? So I figured what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try this. It's a very affordable price point and I'm gonna see how it layers with sweeter fragrances. Here we are, and that's what I'm doing. So I've been you know, playing around with the cotton candies I have and then adding this to give it that pillowy base, yeah. you know? Neat beautiful so uh, yeah if you're if you're if you're like me and you're late to the party you can dip your toe in very affordably with this one the bottle's really pretty yeah i i love the bottle on this the cap yeah. the cap is a little bit bright gold but i love this red i i love i i love this line like so the satin oud and is... that is maison alhambra by the way yeah by latafa there you go latafa doesn't let us down so the next is a sweetie as well. I think this is one of the last gourmands I have in the bunch. I have a few more. Um, this is by Narcisse and it's called Zucarata. You know more about this line than I do actually. You did yeah. a whole video on this line. This is the almond one. Mm -hmm. It smells like an almond biscotti. Uh, yes, totally. Like as soon as you smell the cap, you think bakery. Mm -hmm. This with that cotton candy. would Everything with the cotton candy. Everything. Like I'm telling you. <laughs> it's yeah the theodorus calatinus cotton candy is the coconut oil of life it's a fragrance it's just put, put cotton candy on it put coconut oil on it you're gonna be oh good. wow but yes this to me you're right it smelled yeah. i've always thought it smelled like a bakery but uh, uh an almond biscotti is perfect mm -hmm. totally smells like that that's the best description Really enjoy this one. And I found mm -hmm. the longevity on this one was probably the best out of the whole entire line. Oh, really? What about you? Oh, I you haven't like tried any, any others in the line. I don't find I get a lot of longevity. Oh, you this. don't? Okay, no, so how long approximately? Uh, like three, four hours. Oh, so not yeah, much at all. But eh? my skin does eat fragrance. Yeah. Well, this is also yeah. a eau de toilette. So it is. Yeah. You know. So, um, and it, you know, for a niche fragrance, it's affordable. I think I got this just over a hundred, right. you know, so that's really nice too. The bottle is beautiful. It's got mm -hmm. this embossed gold leaf. It's, I really love it, which is why I brought it, but the performance is, eh, it's yeah. okay. It's just okay. The, the one that I like the best is the, smells like grapes. Ooh. Have you smelled that one? No. I'll try to find it. Uh, okay. See if I have a sample of it still. Okay. But I really liked that one. Oh, nice. But this was my second favorite out of the whole entire line. It's just very pretty and really fun to wear just for yourself when you're having a cozy day. Yeah. This would be great for the fall. 
beautiful perfume. So as I was on this search for the perfect cotton candy, I got into uh, the whole world of bubble gum and I thought I might as well just go for a pure bubble gum scent. This is Toy 2 Bubble Gum by Moschino or Moschino. Tell us how to say it. Yeah, we know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> This is really pretty. It's very, it, like genuinely juvenile, but of course it is. I mean, what do you expect? It's a teddy bear. Um, it's a very pretty fragrance. This, I can honestly say, has pretty oh. poor performance. Oh, does it? Mm -hmm. It smells totally like Hubba Bubba. 100%. Oh my goodness. It's so It's 100% pretty. bubble gum. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Like it's really, really good. Like it's the bubble gum from our childhood with the powder. That, yeah. You know, you're unwrapping it. It's got just oh, that hint of yeah. like even a mintiness. Yeah. It's very, very bubble gum. Um, the bubble oh my gum, goodness. Bubble gum lasts about five minutes. Oh, really? Like I'm not even kidding you. It just, it visits and then it's off and running. And you're left with a very pretty, somewhat generic, but honestly very pretty sweet mm. rose. It's just oh really? It's pretty. It's a very pink fragrance. Yeah, I I really love the bubble gum. Uh, I would be sad if it turned uh, rosy. It's on almost me. a lipsticky rose. Okay, like not an iris, but yeah. kind of a cosmetic smelling rose. Right. But it's a happy little fragrance. Mm -hmm. To me, this fragrance would be perfect for if you have a girl that's just getting into fragrance yes. and you want to buy her. First of all, it's the cutest thing ever. <laughs> um, like not to say that women can't wear it because I don't care. Like I don't consider fragrance to be limited for anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that this would be such a beautiful first perfume in and, this cute packaging. And it's a really nice chunky big bottle. Yeah. Like you feel like you're getting so much perfume. It's a 3.4 ounce, but just the way the bottle looks, it's adorable. I really yeah. love it. I'm really happy to have it. Um, but yeah, just to full disclosure, the longevity isn't that great. And if you're after bubble gum, it's going to be fun for a very short period. Too bad. It really is. And I think it's just maybe one of those notes, not unlike cotton candy that are, it's hard to get them to stick without other things going on in the fragrance. Um, this is an eau de toilette too. So it that's is. probably why it doesn't last as long, Thank but you. that's the, actually Kais or some places, some, does mm -hmm. Dua have a bubble gum perfume they do I actually it's coming it's so I'm gonna have it tomorrow oh, okay so I'll let you know I hear rave reviews that it really smells just like this bubble gum note but it lasts oh okay I'm so excited I think it's called berry orange bubble gum okay I'm really excited for that one and we will do a video in the future and sure. I'll bring it for sure but speaking of eau de toilettes they don't make them like they used to so I'd heard a lot about this fragrance. This is Issy Miyake Low Dizzy. It's, I believe, the first fragrance she ever put out. Yeah, I think so. Um, this is an eau de toilette. This performs. This goes on and on and on. This is femininity in a bottle. It has the reputation it has, and it's still relevant today for a reason. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't have this one. I have the Rose and Rose smelling this I want to get it it's like gorgeous. so it's to me what I get out of this one is it's a little bit aquatic and musky mm -hmm. uh, I agree I think it's very feminine it's something that you could wear as a signature fragrance I think it would work well in an office type setting because you're going to smell just really good a little bit clean uh -huh. yeah so like the muskiness is definitely there mm -hmm. there's a little bit of um mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, yeah, it doesn't, it's, it's that smell that smells like a classy woman, mm -hmm. but it's just clean mm -hmm. to me. So I, I really enjoy this one. I think it's a, a kind of a freshy, musky freshy. What I really like about it is it's a freshy for sure. Like you could even call it like a shampoo kind of freshy, but it is thick. It yeah, is, it lasts a long, long right? time. It lasts a long time and it's really like unmistakably you're you're leaving a trail with this one. Yeah. So I think uh, some of the notes off the top of my head, there's definitely like watery, like it, there might be a water lily or some kind of a watery floral. Lotus or something. But there's, yes, there you go. Yeah, I think that's actually in the top notes, but it also has melon. Oh, okay. And... 
this is sort of, you know, signature to the 90s. And to be quite honest, it does remind me of Elizabeth Arden Sunflowers. Oh, more, yeah, I get you. Right? I didn't expect that. I didn't know what to expect. I had a vague idea of what I was getting into. I just got the tester. That's why I don't have the, the cap for this one. But um, it's got that kind of 80s, 90s femininity feel that Sunflowers does. So I, I really can't get enough of that. I like that a yeah. lot. Uh, this is the kind of perfume if you spray it on and you get it in your hair and you go to sleep, mm -hmm. you're going to wake up and you're going to smell it in your hair. Yeah. Like it's, I really love this a lot. Yeah. And I'm so glad I have it. I want to smell that other one that you have, the Rose on yeah. Rose. It's way, Rose on Rose and Rose is way sweeter than this mm -hmm. one. This one is more grown woman. The Rose and Rose is a little bit jammy, a little bit more fun, flirty. Whereas this one to me smells like a sophisticated woman that smells clean. Like she just smells clean. Uh, but I agree. Like, you know, um, I, I, and I don't associate this with being mature or anything like that. But you know, when you'd go to hug your mom and you'd smell that perfume smell, mm -hmm. that's, that's the feel that you get where you just, mm -hmm. you go in for a hug and it smells good. Like that's all you know. You just know it smells good. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's beautiful. It smells like a lady. Yes. It's that mysterious aura, you know. I agree. Yeah, it's beautiful. So yeah, really high marks. I've heard people say that this smells like sort of like a woodland fairy. Okay. You know, I yeah. don't know. I don't get any woodiness or any woodland feel from it. That would be more like amethyst is the woodland fairy for mm -hmm. us, right? Yeah. But this one smells like, yeah, like, like that mythical feminine mm -hmm. you don't know what yes. it is but you just want to smell more of it so this one's amazing so this is the second perfume uh arabian perfume in this haul i only have two um and this one is by Latafa pride it's called la african drummer this is tiare flower ylang ylang coconut or coconut milk i can't remember and solar notes <sighs> And this to me is an That's almost one-to-one -one across the board dupe of Juliet Has a Gun, Lust for Sun. Okay. Which is one of my favorite perfumes in life. Does Lust for Sun have a little bit of mango in it? I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, I really like that. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm. I'm going to actually get this one, but I'm gonna just wait until summer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it is absolutely beautiful. I love the packaging too. It's super cool. Like what's really nice about this one is it hits you pretty hard with a very syrupy yellow floral. It's not overly sweet. It is a sweet floral, but it's it's that yellow floral that can be really intense and some people don't like that. I love yellow florals, but I know you're yeah. you're sort of 50/50 with yeah. them. This one, however, is just the blend is so smooth and it wears beautifully. It really really is nice on the skin and the longevity. What's this like? is a powerhouse. Is it it okay. outlasts the Juliet has a gun as well. Really. Like to me, these ones and these bottles, I think in the Pride line, that's where we have Latafa Affection, which is the pistachio fragrance. Mm -hmm. The longevity is really, really good. These are powerful ones from Latafa in the Pride collection. Right. So yeah. Cool. And this is super affordable. It should be around forty to fifty dollars, depending. I get a lot of the yellow floral in there. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you tried it on. I wanted you to try it on. Yeah, it's very smooth though. So mm -hmm. I like it. Awesome. All right, so next we have Peau Soleil by Teo Cabanel. This is such a unique and interesting fragrance, absolutely for summer. Oh, yeah. It's salt, coconut, and as the name suggests, it's a skin fragrance. It smells like salty beach skin. Yeah, to me, it smells like, uh, it doesn't smell like chlorine, but it reminds me of the pool. It, well, I, yeah. The air of the pool. It almost, exactly. I When I first got it, I was like, I don't know if I can get down with this. I've really gotten down with it since. And <laughs> I really kind of felt like this actually smells like chlorine. I can get the pool a little bit. I know you said it's not quite there. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't, hint. yes, yes, just yeah. a hint of, but it does, it reminds me of pool air, but I always yeah. like that feel. It smells humid. Like, yeah. I think of humidity, I think of air, I think of clean. Yeah, 
and the salt really really brings it there yeah you got to get your nose on this just be just for the curiosity of it because i think they did a great job of that salty skin that pool outdoor pool kind of hot sun feel and the humidity yeah and that's that's quite a lot to capture in a bottle yeah you know i'm always so impressed with teo Cabernet. now um a longevity on that one what's it like uh, it sits pretty close to the skin okay but I think so it's, it's more of lasting. a skin scent yeah skin yeah. scent but lasts a long time yeah okay which should bring us very naturally to Skin by Clean Reserve. I love this one. I really love it. This is for me, just I love wearing it personally for myself. It's very close to the skin. It doesn't project a lot, but it does evolve on the skin when it warms up when you're wearing it. Right. Um, what I really like about it, it's one of these kind of ambroxan -y, you know, your skin butt better, almost mm -hmm. there. But instead of going sort of the irisy or orris route that Glossier does, yeah. Glossier U, which is a beautiful fragrance and I love too, this one has a praline note in the base. Oh, cool. Which makes it kind of just, and I think it has salt as well. So it it almost smells a little bit dessert-like, but it's not gourmand. Right. It just gives you just a touch of sweetness that is like sweet skin. It's really lovely. Um, I don't like this one. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's it's not it, it's not the fragrance. The fragrance is actually nice. Clean does the same thing that Juliet has a gun does to me. So it instantly somehow affects me in in between the eyes. There's something in some fragrances that just I can't vibe with like they bother me uh, like in other words a little bit of a headache inducing thing um my sister also loves this one in fact i think she has this one mm -hmm. and what's wonderful about this particular fragrance is that you know there's lots of settings nowadays where you can't wear fragrance yeah. and this one you can actually get away with it because it's so mild sits sits close to the skin but it, it just smells clean and good yeah. Um, and so you can kind of get away with wearing it and you know, you've got some fragrance on, so it makes you feel good, but it's likely not going to, um, uh, you know, affect anybody else. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, from that perspective, it's great. I'm just not a fan of clean reserve. I get it. Well, then we'll speed through this next <laughs> one because I brought another. <laughs> I really have been into it. Actually, Maria helped me identify that I really love your skin but better. I really love fragrances that kind of mysteriously settle into your skin, warm up with your skin, and then create this sort of mysterious, do you just smell like that? Or, you know, is that your shampoo? Or, you know, I really like that. And don't get me wrong, I love bombastic fragrances as yeah. well. But I love that kind of mysterious, yeah. who is that? Who are mm -hmm. you? This one, I really love. This is called... You know what? I'm going to, before you go on, I just want to say, the other thing is, is that sometimes um, as women, we get into this thing of thinking of the bombastic fragrances as the sexy ones. Yeah. But it's actually the your skin, the skin but better type fragrances that a lot of times men find intriguing intoxicating can't get enough of um yeah i find that those are the ones yeah. that actually turn guys on as Aww. opposed to the bombastic ones because it's let's face it it's the you Intimate. were rolling around in bed on exactly. a sunday morning kind of a smell right yeah. or friday night or whatever but yeah. it's that kind of you know you smell feminine you smell like a girl but you're not, but you're subtle yeah, it's and maybe it's kind of also in in keeping with that that whole thing of less is more in the sense of when you want to be sexy, you don't want to wear less clothes necessarily. You don't want to be overly obvious. You want to be subtle, you know. And that's that kind of thing that I think I guess that's why I keep associating it with true femininity because yes. it doesn't hit you over the head. Yeah, less is more. Uh, so yeah, there's a real place in my heart and my perfume collection for these kind of fragrances. And then Juliet has a gun as You've well. You've convinced me. I'm, I... <laughs> <laughs> I just wish they didn't, you know. Fizz yeah, up I don't your know what it so is much. about like both those lines. And I think the weird thing is, is they're supposed to be clean. Like yeah. so, they're they're the yeah. isn't that what they call them? Clean. Yeah. So they're supposed to be more healthy for you. But for whatever reason, 
both those brands. There's a, just a few that kind of, I thought it was Ambroxan, but there's been other fragrances that have Ambroxan that do, doesn't do that to me. So yeah. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah. We didn't talk about the second clean. Yeah. Yeah. I interrupted her. Okay. Let's oh, no, go. no, no. That's okay. Um, let's see here. So yeah, I'm actually not 100% sure of the notes. I'm pretty sure this one has ambrette seeds. Oh, okay. And it has um, some pear. You can definitely get the pear. And I think there might be praline in that oh. one as well. But this one ends up drying down to smelling extremely similar to uh, solar. What's the one I love from Sonic Flower? Yeah, thank That's you. That's what it is. So it dries down to smelling like okay. Sonic Flower to me. And I'm in love with Sonic Flower. Yeah. So to me, this is just another really similar to that. That ambrette seed, carrot seed kind of... Again, very mysterious. It smells clean, but smells um, not quite like laundry, a little bit like skin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, this is the one that I really do enjoy. Radiant Nectar, and I actually like the suede one. Oh, yeah. Suede Oud? Oud I think that's suede, what it's called. Something. That I one I liked. That one yet. I, I think I've got a sample somewhere. Me and my, I think I've got a sample <laughs> somewhere. Again, the vortex of samples. It's Our somewhere. samples are all, they're so out of hand, hey? My oh, yeah. samples are just It's a disaster. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, this one I actually really do like, and I don't find that this one does that. I don't oh, know why, good. but I'm yeah, that one I really, that. really do enjoy. It's a little bit sparkling. Uh, it gives me the same sort of vibe is something like an Eden Sparkling Lychee as okay. far as the, the sweetness, but this is like way more delicate. Like, so it's like, it's a whisper of that. Whereas Eden Sparkling Lychee is like, bam, in your face to yeah. me. This is, has a little bit of that sweet, almost tart-like feel, yeah. at least in the opening. Um, but it's more of a skin scent kind of yeah. idea. Absolutely. So this to me is a way more sexy. Than something yes. like an Eden Sparkling Lychee, which is to me flirty and fun, but this yeah. is a little bit more like I agree. It's it's a roll in the like <laughs> a roll in the sheets, yeah. The Sunday morning kind of idea. I get you. And I will say too, just one last note on these clean reserve fragrances. They start out, you know, just what we've described, just sort of like a really nice, subtle, feminine, beautiful, shampoo-y even, just light skin fragrance. But they surprised me quite a bit. Both of them evolve much more than I thought they would cool. on the skin, like much more. Um, you know, the sort of sweeter base notes come out more later on right. after maybe even like a full hour of wear. Okay. So, um, I find most of the time I don't get too much in the fragrance journey, especially mm -hmm. with simple ones like this, but these ones really, evolve. they're, they're high quality. Yeah. They cool. evolve for sure. I'm literally in love with that African drummer. Like I can <sighs> smell it. It's all I can think about now. I'm just so, so happy good. that you can enjoy that Juliet has a gun profile without getting bothered by the notes that they put in. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. All right, two left. And they're both from the same house. So it's Jill Sanders' son. This is a, a new discovery for me. Maria has had it. And our sweet friend Janet. I believe she was the one who introduced this to me. Yeah, well, she was the she gave me uh, a, a little bottle of okay. it a couple of years ago, so that's how I knew about it. Okay. Yeah. So apparently, Janet is from Canada, but she lives in Germany, and um, she says that this is available in drugstores all over Germany. Yeah. That this is actually a very, very popular fragrance there, and I think it's been around for decades as well. I yeah, it's is... it's it's an old old staple so to me what i get is like that that typical sunscreen vibe mm -hmm. do you get that with some tra i wouldn't call it a typical sunscreen okay it, at least not to my nose this is much much more powdery to me maybe okay even a little ambery oh really okay yeah so um I, yeah i don't get like I don't get like a coconut tra solar kind of sunscreen feel right i get yeah really it dries down. I'm going to use some of this. It dries down a little, little powdery to me. Really and it's almost, I mean, 
rather than sunscreen, Lotion I get baby bum cream. Like I almost get a little bit of penitent cream. Really? A little bit. Yeah, I just Okay, I, I get just, where you're coming from. You know? So it's it's but it's very pretty. Like it's like, you know, penitent cream has a really specific It's brand. a lotion yeah. bum screen. <laughs> <laughs> screen? <laughs> Well, kind of. Instead of a sunscreen, it's a bum screen. <laughs> the original bum bum cream. <laughs> <laughs> it really has like kind of an amber. I'm never going to get the penitent out of my head. Single <laughs> facts. What the heck? But I love it still. Yeah. Like it, you know, it's, um, it's so in that sense, it's a classic drugstore kind of a smell, but right. I'm all about it. I really like it. It's long lasting, it's powdery, and it does smell like a day at the beach as well. Yes. So if you brought your baby, then <laughs> <laughs> put the bum cream on. Yeah, yeah it but. is a little powdery, a little bit lotiony. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So this but it, just... that, that sounds terrible. Like, <laughs> I did not smells smell it smells like penitent. It smells like it actually, it's, it smells really good. It but, does. But uh, we just don't know how to describe it in a way that doesn't sound revolting. <laughs> <laughs> Fragrance junkies get it. I know you guys get it. In the best possible way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> smells like bum cream in the best possible way. <laughs> Oh, we're out of control. All right. And that brings us to our last perfume again from Jill Sander. This one's called Style. I'm going to let you tell me what this smells like to you. I think this is a hidden gem. Apparently it's been discontinued, but I found this on fragrancenet.com. And I know there's lots of you out there that are huge fans of this fragrance. And I've read on Fragrantica so much sadness over the fact that it's been discontinued. It can be easily found right now on fragrancenet.com. Really cool. I, I love this it. one. Like this is one I want to add to my collection. To me, it gives me a little bit, I'd be curious as to whether there's Jasmine in you here. I'm gonna look up the notes. Cause it smells a little alien-esque to me. There's a little bit of green in there too. Oh, definitely, definitely. All right, so this is actually quite an interesting blend. It's got top notes of pink pepper, cardamom, mango, and freesia. It's got middle notes of iris, violet, magnolia, and jasmine. Okay. And then the base notes are vanilla, musk, and amber. Oh, and amber. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, to me it gives me a hint of alien, not oh, quite, God. but kind of. But I, I just think it's beautiful. On the skin, it, though, it doesn't smell like alien. On the skin, it smells, I, again, there's a bit of a cleanness to it, a little bit of green. Ooh, it's nice. Yeah. So when I first read about this and I saw the, I loved it so much. I would have bought in backup bottles. I can't believe it's discontinued. I just grabbed it because it was on at a clearance price too. I got it right. for a really good price and I thought I love Jill Sanders' son. So I'm sure this is as good as everyone's saying. If you haven't noticed lately, Fragrantica has become the Wild West and people are mean. Really? There are so many negative comments. So when you come across a, per I, I find anyway, people are really like sharp tongued on Fragrantica. They don't hold back. It is a very, I mean, they're being honest. Yeah. This one got almost exclusively high, high marks and praise, just like the people wow. love this. And I thought, yeah, it's this is a, a good blind virus to take. I'm really glad I got it. I kind of purposefully stayed away from the notes. I just wanted to be surprised at, you know, why people love it so much. And what I got initially was almost a little bit of a good girl. Right. I felt like there was like maybe some kind of like almond note or something like that because it smelled like a mix of well, almond and florals. Okay. But now that I'm looking at this and smelling it on my skin again, I'm honestly really surprised and interested to see cardamom and mango in the top because you, you know, if you didn't know, would you know? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't associate cardamom or mango with this one. But now that I know that, I mean, the iris, I think, is very prominent. And the iris really gives it that powdery feel. But mm -hmm. then the mango gives it a creaminess and the cardamom a spice. Mm -hmm. But they're, these notes are so polarizing all together. It creates something so unique. Yeah. I really like this one. I guess the other thing is, is when I smell this, it reminds me of fragrances from the late 80s. So I think of an mm -hmm. ANA by mm -hmm. Cacharel. Or just fragrance. I'm not saying it smells like an ANA, but uh, those fragrances that have a little bit of spiciness, a little bit of floral, 
and they're just fun to wear. But I don't feel mm -hmm. like this is like stuck in the 80s. Like I think it smells current. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing uh, old vintage -y smelling about it as far as I'm concerned. It's unique enough too that it, it could smell more modern. So yeah. yeah, it's really kind of a timeless fragrance, but so unique. It's yeah. hard to put, it's hard to put it anywhere. Yeah. Cool. Jill Sanders style. So this is a fun blind buy if you're, you're a risk taker like me, not too expensive and really lovely. So yeah, awesome. that's it. Those are my new ones. So if you guys have smelt any of these, please feel free to weigh in and tell me what you think. And other than that, thank you for joining me, Aww, Kate. Thanks for having me back. It's always <laughs> so much fun. Uh, have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. A little bit of bum cream. <laughs> Note of bum cream. Okay, so. <laughs> it's got a bum cream accord. It's just amazing. <laughs> Nothing like that bum cream accord. What are you working on? A bum cream accord? <laughs>